This is The Way, and welcome to the Geek-Centric Podcast, and welcome to our special Behind the Geeks episode for The Mandalorian Season 3. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, we are Geek-Centric, a podcast focusing on the world of movies, TV shows, games, toys and collectibles, and all things Geek-Centric. Joining me for today's interviews, uh, we have the Star Wars daddy himself, Justin, the Din Djarin loving Lawrence. <laughs> I am a Din Djarin loving Lawrence, whatever you said <laughs> this, there. This is the way, dude. This, this is, is the, way. the way. We are back. We've made it. Mando back. is back. I am so stoked so to talk about all things The Mandalorian. Um, yeah, this is this was a great time. I had to get my this I he was he was locked away since since the since season two. I had him locked away. <laughs> I had to go well, get remember, my he, son. He did make an appearance in the book of Boba Fett. So That's he's, true. He's, He's been in hi he's been hibernating for over two years, I guess now. <laughs> uh, Justin, before we introduce who you got a chance to chat with, uh, I wanted to take a moment to let our listeners know uh, that we actually currently have two watch clubs going on right now. Uh, we have a watch club for HBO's The Last of Us uh, with, I think, the almost, we're almost there. I think we've got Penultimate one more, two more episodes. Yep. Oh my Penultimate's gosh. Penultimate's this week, and then uh, next week is uh, the finale. So we're almost done that watch club. Yeah, and you can catch that at 10 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday night after the episodes air. We had a great chat about the uh, the last two episodes there. So definitely check those out. And mm -hmm. if you, if you obviously you dig Star Wars, you clicked on this video. We also have a watch club for Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 2, uh, which we put up every single Wednesday when the episodes go out. Uh, and that season is also kind of almost almost there. We're getting, We're getting there with there. it. It's almost um, done. But, uh, but also, this is the way we have one more watch club uh, that we're going to be starting up, uh, which will be out on Friday, if you're listening to this on the day uh, that we put this video out uh, or this podcast out. So definitely um, check out that, that first watch club for episode one of The Mandalorian. What a great episode. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you know, we'll have that coming soon uh, to a galaxy near you. Not so far, far away, I guess. Um, Justin, listen, enough of this. You know, the people click on the thing. They're like, these guys are just talking too much. Yeah, Grogu's there, but like, come on. You know, we want to know who are you actually talking to uh, on this special Behind the Geeks episode. So I had the chance to sit down with Rick Famuyiwa, uh, executive producer and director for this upcoming Mandalorian season three. He actually... Uh, directed episode one, yep. episode seven, and episode eight. So he's got his hands involved in this story, uh, needless to say. But that wasn't it. I, I got to sit down with Bo-Katan herself, Katie Sackhoff. This this was an absolute blast. Um, and yeah, a huge thanks to our friends at Disney Studios Canada and by extension Lucasfilm for helping to set this all up. It really means a lot to us again to be included and to have these great conversations uh as, as quick as they are it's you know we'll take the time that we get with them but uh yeah this was this was uh one one for the books yeah i was gonna say muy muy thanks uh muy. to our <laughs> friends at disney studios canada um but yeah dude like of course getting to the chance to talk to these incredibly talented actors and creators and directors and producers is always a joy that we'll, we'll never take for granted. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting to connect with them as people uh, as well. Like, you know, Justin, there's a, a lovely moment where you definitely had a chance to connect with Katie in the same way that you had the chance to connect with uh, Hayden Christensen uh, yeah. around being, uh, you know, a, a Star Wars parent, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, so listen, we could, but you know what, Justin, we'll, we'll talk about that after. Before Moff Gideon tries to steal me away, leaving you to rescue me, right? Let's get to these interviews with the director, Rick Famuyiwa and Katie Sackoff. Hey, Rick. Hey, Welcome Justin. to the Geek Centric Podcast. Hey. My name is Justin. Thanks for having me. How are me. you, man? I'm well. I'm well. How are you? I'm good, man. I am excited to, for this opportunity to chat with you about Mando Season 3. But but first, I, I want to start off by just saying how much of a, a huge fan I am of your film, Dope. Oh, uh, it's easily you. one of my favorite coming-of-age stories, and uh, it's just so honest in the sincerity. So I just wanted to take a second to say thank you for that. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I wanted to get into sort of talking about the, the filmmaking process in and around making these 
you yeah. know, massive episodes. And there's such a, a sense of collaboration that exists because every season there's there's such a fantastic team of f- filmmakers behind yeah. each episode. Yeah. Now, I, I just wanted to know, how do you guys all come together to keep a singular vision while still finding ways to imprint your own filmmaking style into the episodes yeah. that you direct? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it starts with, with John Favreau. And I, and I think the, the fact that he's not only a writer, but a director, um, producer, but also actor. He has a perspective on storytelling and, and collaboration and the understanding from different points of view and wearing different hats of of what, what that means that he's able and has been able to create an, an incredibly collaborative environment where I think every every individual piece and part of it feels like they can bring their creativity, their personality, while we all sort of understand that we are telling a a central story. Um, and I think how he's able to sort of, you know, to to um, you know uh, contextualize all that, and and I think how Dave and I are able to to complement that uh, and and sort of telling the you know, the entire story and where it all fits in um, is a part of it. But but I think it's it really is that spirit of of collaboration because there are so many uh, incredibly talented people who who work on this show um, from beginning to end uh, that 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 are rock stars in their own right and, and bring that every 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 moment. And so. Um, it's exciting to see, and I think that's the biggest part is that everyone feels empowered to to be their absolute best. Yeah, and bring their voice and bring yeah. their vision yeah. to it, while also having such a I, I I describe it as almost like an open community where people yeah. can share their thoughts and and really collaborate and bounce ideas off of each yeah. other. And you know, I think the the gallery from season one mm-hmm. uh, that took a look in behind the scenes was such a great insight into yeah. that. Um, listen, my last question for you is is in regards to uh, a cameo appearance. We actually had a chance to talk with Deborah Chow earlier last year about her cameo as Sash Ketter, and I and she said she enjoyed she enjoyed it, but she much prefers being behind the screen. I wanted to know from you: Will we see uh, Jip Dodger again? And would you want to see him as an action figure? Oh my goodness, definitely. I'll answer that part. Yes, definitely. And if they're not already. <laughs> <laughs> flying off the shelves they should be but um um yeah i, I mean look uh I, I think that's been a fun part it started as like a little joke that turned into this real thing where it's like the you know the directors were uh these uh x-wing pilots and so for me it was incredible because it was you know the the, the seven-year-old kid that you know used to do this with his action figures i'm actually uh, an X-wing pilot myself. It was incredible. So, um, yeah, I think if you squint, <laughs> you might you might be able to see some, you know, some some familiar faces somewhere. So, okay, okay, <laughs> I'll be I'll keep yeah, my eye open. Yeah, but yeah. I gotta tell you, I'll buy a three pack uh, okay. uh, of of you, Sash Ketter, Jim Dodger, and and uh, Teeper Wolf. I think his name Trapper is. Trapper Wolf. Remember. Yeah, yeah, I know. Trapper he Wolf. Was, I, yes. I would definitely want a three pack of you guys. <laughs> Listen, Rick, this was an absolute blast. Uh, thank you so much again for taking some time today. I'm um, looking forward to seeing season three, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, man. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much, man. Take care. All right. Peace. All right. Bye-bye. Katie, my name is Justin. It's an absolute honor to have you here today on the Geek Centric Podcast. How are you today? I'm so good. I'm excited to be here with you. Oh, I'm I'm excited to talk to you about this show. Um, let's kick things off by by talking about your character, Bo-Katan, uh, you know, it's been a while since we've seen her from the animated series. And and last season felt like almost a, a live action reintroduction to the character and, and a bit of a tease of things to come. And now it looks like season three is a full dive into this character. I wanted to know, in your own words, who is Bo-Katan at this point in the Star Wars galaxy? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, she comes with so much baggage and uh and life um and i think at this point she is you know she is she's not even a reluctant ruler she is um she has thrust herself into a position where she truly believes that uh she is the rightful ruler of mandalore and she takes on that 
stress and responsibility of thinking that she is going to reunite her people. Um, and I, I think that that at this point in her life, she's coming with such an ego. Um, and, um, you know, uh, especially at the end of last season. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to find her in a very different place when we first see her. I think that she has had a rude awakening. Well, you've done a great job of talking about it without spoiling anything, so I appreciate that. <laughs> it's, it is a calculated thing. I have to think I as I'm imagine. talking, and it's almost like staccato as I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I got you. I got you. But no, that makes a lot of sense, and I think, yes, where we left off with bo uh, the ego was present, You know, the determination was present, so I'm excited to see how that unfolds. Um, now to get a little personal, I, I recently, uh, this past year, I actually saw you talk with uh, a whole bunch of our other co-hosts on the channel at Fan Expo in Toronto here. Yes. And, um, you know, you had spoken about, you know, how your father was very much an influence in how you got into sci-fi. And, and I think you've actually been very vocal about how he was more so an introduction to Star Wars specifically. And I got to say, as a new dad to a baby girl, there there's nothing more that I look forward to than, than sharing these stories with her one day. And, and I wanted to maybe get some advice. What do you think is the best way or how would you go about uh, introducing her to the world of Star Wars. So um, I can tell you what we did with our daughter. So my daughter is a year old and right. I got her this uh, Star Wars uh, pop-up book that has all the characters of Star Wars in it. So she's just playing with them and she's obsessed okay. with Darth Maul, which scares me because I'm like, oh my God, she's going to be a demon. Um, <laughs> but she also like loves Yoda and she stops at Yoda. Yeah. And so she thinks that Grogu and Yoda are the same. And so she carries mm -hmm. around her like Grogu doll and, and then points to the book and is like, that's Yoda. So I think if you can find just one thing from all of the movies and or the series or the animation that she loves that she can like identify with I think she'll love it and then anything I think truthfully for me when I was a kid it was just doing things with my dad that we both loved and he like explained it to me and he let me talk through it and like pause it and like you know rewind which back in the day that was a VHS it took a while so like he would <laughs> you know um, I think that that's just the most important thing is kids want to and you know when we're little we like to enjoy the same things our parents do it makes us feel close to them so just do that well I I, I, that's some great advice and I couldn't agree more the way you talk about your father's influence so lovingly. I look forward to the day that my daughter would be able to talk about the same thing. So, uh, Katie, this has been an absolute honor. Like I said, I, I can't believe I had the chance to talk to you and have you on the geek centric podcast. It's, it's so great. I'm looking forward to seeing more of you, uh, in the Mandalorian season three. I can't you wait for you to see it. Congratulations on your baby. That's great. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. And we're back. Uh, Justin, I gotta I just have to start off by saying what a lovely moment with with Katie there. Seeing her <laughs> eyes light up, you know, the moment you, you you brought up, you know, her dad or or her talking about her daughter and how they introduced her to Star Wars. That was just lovely. Yeah, I um you know, as a as a sort of a personal thing, uh, I remember when we went to Fan Expo with uh, Meg and Darcy, we we saw Katie uh, talking, and you know she talked about her dad and how much you know he was an influence into how she got into sci-fi and specifically Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And I remember leaving that thinking, like, that's that's the kind of relationship I want with my daughter. You know, <laughs> knowing that my 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 we were expecting a, a girl, and and I, I just knew that I wanted to have that 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 bond with her and be able to share the stories that I love uh, with her. And I love the advice, you know, you just you just need to to do the things with her. Yeah. You know, spend the time with her and naturally she's going to she's going to stay connected. She's going to connect with that. And I think that that's, you know, that's just such a great overview um, piece of advice that, you know, if you want your kids to really connect with what you love, share it with them, do mm -hmm. it with them and experience it with them. So I'm very much looking forward to the day that I can um introduce Ellie to the galaxy far, far away, um, all things Star Wars. And I, I got to say, I'll probably be introducing her to the animated side first, uh, you know, get her introduced to Bo-Katan uh, and understanding, you know, the sense of strong women in Star Wars. Um, and I, I think that, you know, again, Katie Sackhoff, she's pretty much defined 
uh, Bo-Katan, both in the animated and the live action. So, you know, she'll have the same sort of appreciation down the road as I do. But I like the I like the advice that she gave of of also sort of having her maybe um, see what she gravitates towards. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you do that thing like that I've seen in shows. I don't know how kids brains work. But I've seen in shows where they the therapist they'll put like the different little things in front of them and then they'll yep. like gravitate towards one. So you just gotta put a bunch of like put a Jawa over here, put a little Grogu over mm -hmm. here, put a you know, a little you know, I, I think it would be a lot of fun and, well, and we to see sort of where she sort of leans towards. For sure. And I think that, that like you said, it's like choose your own adventure. Uh yeah. we, we've had a little bit of experience with my nephew, but I know that Katie she has such pride, you know, and such a an honest relationship with her her father and yep. i know that she is a a new mother as well she's talked about it in great detail even at, at fan expo here in toronto she was talking about that whole experience and you know it's nice again when you can find moments to connect um with these actors or directors on a level that's more personal to them uh you know i think my interview with with rick mm -hmm. you know right off the bat i had to call out the fact that um, I would absolutely adore his movie Dope. Have you seen it? <laughs> Have you seen Dope? I've not, but I you you've been making me want to. It yeah. is so great. Watch the trailer. Okay. Uh, it is it's absolutely fantastic. It's dope. It, it's dope. It literally <laughs> is dope. And I remember when I heard that that Rick was attached to being a part of of the Mandalorian that I was kind mm -hmm. of intrigued by it because his stories are very grounded. And again, m most of what I knew of his filmmaking did come from from Dope and just this honest coming of age story. Um, but I, I like that I, I you know I, I kind of threw that in there because I really just wanted to say like I love this movie. It was so good and it, and I think it found I found it at the right time in my life when. I was really inspired by filmmaking, but was looking for something that was different. Mm -hmm. And that's very much what dope is. It, it it takes a lot of the traditional coming of age stuff, but kind of flips it on its head and makes it more relatable and grounded. I think he kind of like, I, I don't know if he was like kind of surprised by that because <laughs> here we are talking about Star Wars. And the first thing I'm going to bring up is a movie from 2015 that he did. Right. Um, so, you know, again, he, it just goes to show like, as Favreau said, it's like, the filmmakers that he chose for season one, which Rick was was part of that team, um, they weren't scared to jump in, you know, both feet to tackle the stories of Star Wars. And that's what excited him. And, I, you know, Rick has now worked on season one, season two, and here he seems to have more of an involvement with directing more episodes and even being uh, updated to executive producer as well. So there's a lot more of an investment here on his part in, in the stories that we're, we're about to experience with season three. Well, you know, and it's interesting, um, bringing up dope, I think uh, John Favreau many times in terms of some of the influence for Book of Boba Fett, uh, mm -hmm. And the the sort of the narrative that happens with Grogu in in that show, he's he's equated a lot of that inspiration from Paper Moon, uh, which mm -hmm. is a film from 1973, and it's it's got a very similar sort of idea or similar story to what happens there. And uh, I I think that's one of the best aspects about um, you know these these series is that we are getting so many different voices. Um, that are that are not only drawing from their you know themselves but also their inspirations right yes. and I think it's really really cool I think the fact that we get to see some of Rick's love of classic samurai cinema um, mm -hmm. obviously that fits so well within the Star Wars world but then even getting to see him stretch his legs a little bit with the heist episode um, back in uh, season one so mm -hmm. I you know I think um, it, it's fantastic I love I love how he you know he's getting to be that seven year old kid again uh, and getting to, to kind of dive into the world of Star Wars. Um, I just, you know what? I will say, because as I mentioned earlier, we do have the Watch Club uh, for Mando Season 3 coming up. We got to be on Jib Watch. Jib Dodger Watch. I think we, <laughs> Jib it Dodger Watch. It's, it begins as of ep episode one. Yeah. Squint uh, your eyes, be, he said. Squint we'll your squint. eyes. You might, you might see him. You might He's see gotta him in the background. He's got to be somewhere. He's got to be somewhere. I would, I would love it too if he somehow got got Deborah Chow back on and you, know, oh, you see Dave Filoni I'm telling you that that would be a wicked three pack 
Yeah. Uh, you know, sell it at Celebration as a, as a limited edition. Oh, uh, you we'll know, all buy it. it. Be, We've already bought oh, it. I, I've already pre-ordered yes, it. I've already, in my mind. I've already pre-ordered it in my <laughs> mind. Exactly. You took the words right out of my mouth. All right. Well, listen, that is it for this Behind the Geeks episode. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to subscribe to us wherever you like to listen to podcasts on your podcast service of choice. And check out, the, you know, these interviews, not only are they audio format, um, but they also are in video format as well. So if you want to see Katie Sackhoff's face light up uh, and Justin's face light up at the same time, uh, you can watch these interviews over again at youtube.com slash geekcentric. Uh, also, you can check us out on TikTok and Instagram at wearegeekcentric. Uh, we got some great TikToks going up. Justin's been doing a lot of really fun stuff there. So definitely uh, check all that stuff out. Keep up with us. Um, Justin, listen, say it with me. Love ya. Peace. This, this is, is the, the way. way.